What's going on, everybody? Before we get into the podcast, just a reminder, make sure you subscribe to the Patreon. $2 a month, you get a personalized thank you across all social media platforms. $5 a month, early access to the live streams, new music, short films, everything. Patreon.com slash Church of Juvie. There's a video up now for all of you to enjoy. So go check it out. Patreon.com slash Church of Juvie. Let's get to the podcast. show i'm your host juvie the kid hit me up on twitter instagram snapchat g-u-v-y-t-h-a-k-i-d what are we getting into today let me check these show notes again i know i got a lot quite a bit to talk about (laughs) goodness i should have had this open what can you do all right yeah we got quite a bit to talk about here folks Okay, so first I want to start with um, some some worries I'm going to address from the folks. Okay, so I've been getting some questions about the Patreon and everything. And uh, I just want to throw this out there to everybody right now. I said it before I started the Patreon, and I, I, I mean it now. If you can't, you know, if you can't afford, like to support that like as a monthly thing that's okay i like you know what i mean as long as you folks are still checking the videos out and everything like that like that means the world to me you know what i mean if you can help it with the patreon then that's like that's amazing obviously i appreciate that but no like don't worry if you got like you know what i mean i understand like some people like I've said it, you know, some people $5, that makes a difference in their monthly budgets. You know what I'm saying? Like, so don't worry if you can't, you know, if you're in a position where you can't like afford it, don't worry about it. Just still, you know, watch the YouTube and everything like that. And, you know, support like that. Share the stuff around if you enjoy it. That's, you know, that's what I ask really. Um, Everything, so the way Patreon works is when I post a video, it's, um, at least from what I've figured out so far, um, it runs off of a YouTube code, like the video from YouTube. Um, So like most of the stuff you're going to see on Patreon will be on YouTube eventually. Um, like right now there's a sat, there's yesterday's, well, technically today's cause I had to re-record it, but, <laughs> um, there's a Saturday short shorts up there. Um, there is a little bit of editing. All I did was like cut out the little dead spots and then added music. Um, but I'm going to be editing that more to like, you know, cut in certain videos and like, uh, like video clips and like pictures and everything to just to like add more to the video itself. And, um, but for right now, like, ev- like it, it for $5 or more, whoever does that, like you, people will get early access to that. So they don't have to wait. You know what I mean? Um, but it's going to be the same thing with new music and short films as well. Like those folks will get early access to it. And like a couple days later, or, you know, sometimes a week or whatever, it depends on what it is. Um, like it'll come out on YouTube for everybody else, but this is kind of, I guess like, I don't know, maybe in a way this is like, a, I don't know, like an like a exclusive club kind of thing. <laughs> it's our clubhouse guys, <laughs> but no, like, don't worry about it. YouTube that like that, none of that is going to stop at all. It's not going to slow down all the vlogs and life lessons. Those will always be like coming out no matter what, like on time kind of thing. Um, if there's like one day, if there's some like really special podcast, maybe that'll be early access on Patreon. Um, but like, you know what I mean? Don't worry, folks. Do not worry. 
You know, like if you can't afford it, chill. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? If, uh, fuck, what was it? Oh, if you're worried that like the YouTube content or anything, that's going to slow down or stop. Don't worry. Cause that's for sure not going to happen. Um, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I hope you folks aren't going anywhere cause you fucking, you know, you kind of help make this what it is, but, <laughs> um, yeah, so no, no worries. McFlurries, no worries. Um, that's all I had to do. That's all I had to address with the Patreon. Oh, I guess for the live streams, I want to tell you guys how that's going to work. Um, just in case people have like missed the episodes, I think I've talked about it before. Um, so much like right now, the, like the video that's up, if when I do live streams, uh, I'll have them as unlisted. I figure like, I guess the, there is a way that people can still view them. That's besides the point. Uh, if you want to view the live stream and everything without, you know, like just like the raw live stream kind of thing, um, then that'll be up on Patreon. And then I'm going to go through those and I'm going to be editing them up and everything to actually like make them proper videos. You know what I mean? Like have the video clips that I talk about or have like the pictures pop up. You know what I mean? Um, So if you like, it's one of those things, the live streams will happen, but they'll be put on Patreon after kind of thing. So you can check those out like as they were uh, earlier than everyone else. And then when they come out on YouTube kind of thing, it'll be all edited up. Yeah. That's how that's going to work. Um, actually from that, we're going to skip down to the bottom here. (coughs) So for fucking, oh, for years, folks, I've been trying to find the Lon Chaney Phantom of the Opera figure and I finally have it. So exciting. It's so fucking exciting. Um, I'm going to be doing an unboxing for that, for sure. Uh, but this one's going to be a little bit different because uh, I actually, I'm, I am a really big fan of the musical, but I also, maybe a little bit more so, um, I'm a fan of the book by Gaston Leroux. Um, it's just, uh, when, okay. When you listen to the audiobook of it or when you read it, there's points where you you have to like kind of take a second and be like wait 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 is is this the first person account like it almost has that feeling to it at points where it feels like he's like like he's writing his story down in a way you know what i mean like he heard these stories of the phantom and he's writing them down it's, it's really interesting. Even <laughs> the, uh, you know, some of the, some of the story behind that, um, that book being made, um, Mr. LaRose, uh, beliefs behind the Phantom as well. Um, as well as some like little movie tidbits. Uh, I'm going to be just like that unboxing. I'm going to actually go, uh, more into the history of this character, you know what I mean? Um, cause a lot of us, we know the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> we know the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical and, uh, the movie that came out and everything. Um, but a lot of people don't really know, uh, about the book and about that original film adaptation. Um, and even with that, there's a lot of really interesting little bits that go with the movie and with the book. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like my opportunity to really go into those. Um, so that's going to be fun. It's going to be an unboxing with a a bit of like a, a little history lesson in a way too. Um, yeah, I'm exciting or I'm exciting. I meant to say I'm excited (laughs) anyway. Um, I think what I'll do for that one is that'll be a Patreon video. So I'll put that one up for anybody that that's like the five dollars or more subscriber. Um, Tuesday, the YouTube folks, you'll still get life lessons, but Patreon, uh, you'll get a life lessons and you'll get this unboxing. Um, but it that will come out on Saturday. 
So you'll get early access to it on Tuesday, but it'll come out on the YouTube for everyone else on Saturday. So you actually have a couple of days to enjoy it and kind of go over the little um, history tidbits and everything. Uh, yeah. And this weekend, Saturday Short Shorts will also be made public and coming out and everything on uh, next Saturday as well. So um, yeah, it'll be a double video day for Saturday. But for Tuesday, if you're a $5 uh, Patreon subscriber, you'll get a double video for that day. And you'll get a little like, kind of like history lesson sort of thing. All right, next show note. <laughs> oh, good folks. I'm feeling fucking good tonight. I don't know. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Except for this burp that I feel like it's stuck in my chest. Oh, excuse me. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, feeling good. I lost where I was for a second. Not like in reality, just in my show notes. Uh, ooh, actually, okay. So, the newest Doctor Who was um, announced. And it... Was the, yeah, the 13th Doctor. And it's the first lady to don the time machine the phone booth I don't know either way it's the first it's the first lady to or first female to be uh, the doctor and honestly I like it and I'll tell you why this makes sense folks and I'm not even like a fan of Doctor Who like I couldn't really tell you much about it Except for the fact that it seems like the like for me anyway, it seems like the do like the doctors aren't the same person, or if they are, like it's it's from like alternate timelines or realities or dimensions, whatever you want to say. So it would make sense, and this is purely this is just like this is coming from someone who's always like been curious about alternate dimensions and timelines and stuff like that. So it, like from coming from that like way of thinking about it, it would make sense that one of those realities, or at least a few of those realities, there would be female Doctor Who, Doctor Who's, I don't know, there would be female doctors. <laughs> it makes sense. It, like, it's one of those things that if anyone's like, oh, this is, what the fuck is this? The doctors can't be a woman. Listen, you're watching a fucking show about time travel. And dimensions and different creatures and gadgets. But a, but a lady being the doctor? that That's what's not possible? Oh, okay. Well... You know, it's just like, it makes sense, and I get it, and I like it. So we got the first lady Doctor Who, and that is actually a perfect, oh, perfect segue, because I have something else for all my Doctor Who fans out there. Um, in the Entertainment Weekly issue that I picked up, and that we're going to be talking about a couple of things. Okay, where is it? There we go. Uh, Doctor Who Christmas Special comes out. December 25th, obviously. Uh, okay, so, actor... Oh, no. That's the whole... Fuck it. We'll go through the article. It's quick. It's just like a paragraph thing. So, uh, actor Peter Cabaldi... Cabaldi? I don't know. Fell in love with Doctor Who in the 60s when the uh, titular... Titu I don't even... I've never seen that word before. Titular? I don't know. When the Time Lord was played by the late William Hartnell, so it is appropriate that Cabaldi's swan song as the 12th Doctor on this year's special uh, Christmas episode finds his, finds his character teeming with that first Doctor. Oh, that's cool. So this Christmas special is actually going to be uh, the, the last appearance of the 12th Doctor, and he's going to be team like teaming up with the first Doctor Who, uh, now portrayed by David Bradley from Game of Thrones. Huh. We've authentically recreated the first Doctor, says showrunner Stephen Moffat. Uh, we could put it out in black and white, and you would think it was William Hartnell. Hmm. I don't know. 
So that's pretty cool. So Doctor Who Christmas special, the twelfth, the last appearance of the twelfth Doctor will be with the first Doctor Who, teaming up to f fight crime and solve mysteries. I, I, like again, folks, I have never seen that show, so I apologize. But hey, Christmas special, December twenty fifth, Doctor Who. That's exciting. <laughs> uh, oh, another thing for anybody wondering for the, about the new Jigsaw movie, uh, that release date is October twenty seventh. I know I've been talking about it a lot, and I just I noticed the uh, release date in the magazine today, so I wanted to share that for anybody who's uh, who's interested. Um, oh, this sounds pretty cool. So there's this new movie that's going to be coming out uh, March thirtieth. So next year, uh, Ready Player One. Um, in the virtual reality of Ready Player One, anything is possible. The real world in 2045 is a hellhole. But by slipping on gloves and goggles, players can enter a geek wonderland. Inside this oasis, it's possible to interact with the action of beloved movies and hang with the favorite characters, most of them from the nostalgia-saturated 1980s. What? That would be so cool. Oh, man. Rambo, Terminator, any of the Rockies. Oh, there's so many movies I could think of I'd go back to. <clears throat> you could fucking hang out in those movies. Wait a minute. Didn't the kid from Last Action Hero did that? Or do that, sorry? That Schwarzenegger movie, Last Action Hero. The kid got sucked into the movie. He was interacting with all of them. Well, it's kind of different, I guess, though. Uh, either way. Oh, so it's based off a 2011 novel uh, by Ernest Cline. He loved the idea of a young hero who could bounce between the realms of classic video games, cartoon shows, and sci-fi films on a quest to solve a mystery that could lead to fame and fortune. Hmm. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, what Klein never imagined was that Steven Spielberg, whose early movies are on the spine of his pop culture uh, nervous system, would want to direct it. They had they had me make a dream of list directors, but I never put Steven on it. But because that just seemed ridiculous. Oh, that's cool. So like, man, Steven Spielberg like saw this this like this dude's idea and everything was like, I want to do that. That's fucking. Tell me things aren't possible in this world, folks. So that's pretty cool. It's set in the future, 2045, and you put, like, you know, the virtual reality gloves and goggles on, and you can, like, go... This guy... The, people can go into, like, old movies and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. But you run into a lot of problems in that. You're gonna fucking run into villains you're not ready to deal with. You know what I mean? Like if any, like if anybody else is there, it could be like you know. For them, it's like it's a movie, so they can do shit without consequence, and you're there, and you're gonna get caught up in that shit. Hmm. No bueno. No bueno. Last thing from the Entertainment Weekly, uh, Tomb Raider, which I just noticed on the on the cover of this, it actually doesn't even say weekly. It says Entertainment Geekly because it's the Comic-Con preview. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so the new to Tomb Raider uh, interpretation, which I actually have a lot more hope for than the Angelina Jolie ones, um, that is scheduled to come out March 16th of next year. Um, so let's, I don't know, let's see what this says. I haven't read it yet. Uh, Lara, Lara Croft is finding her roots. Uh, this origin story portrays Croft. Oscar winner Alicia Vikander? Haven't seen her before, I don't think. Um, okay, so sorry. <laughs> it portrays Croft as a young woman searching for her father. She has all the fierce, tough, curious, intelligent traits, but we've stripped away all of her experience, Vikander says. So we get to watch Croft basically sink or swim for one action scene. Sorry, <laughs> basically sink or swim. For one action scene, we used the London venue for Olympic rafting, she says. They threw me down that river with my hands tied about 50 times. I didn't need to act, just react. God, do you imagine that getting ready for a movie? And you just fucking tie your hand. All right, let's go, boys. Throw me in the fucking river. 
Oh my god. Fuck that. Not for me, folks. Not for me. Either way, Tomb Raider, March 16th. It's the next year. I don't know. I hope it's better than the Angelina Jolie ones anyway. I was not a fan. But everyone, you know, not everyone's a fan of everything. What can you do? Uh, oh, so the Disney Expo that's going on right now. I'm not sure about any of the other news. Um, but a behind-the-scenes reel of The Last Jedi was uh, released there. And it... it there was, there was a few little, like, interesting scenes. One, we like, that we know they shot Rey handing Luke his lightsaber, and that in itself. If that scene doesn't fucking get you excited, then I don't know if you are a Star Wars fan. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the one thing that struck me, um, or at least that I kept pausing and going back to, was... They have they had a few different Kylo Ren helmets on a table, and one looked like it. One literally looked like Hulk, just like punched in the front of it, basically. And one kind of I don't know. One looked pretty normal, but makes me wonder what's going on there. If you folks have any theories, throw them below. But I don't know. It's just the broken, um, like punched in Kylo Ren helmet caught my attention. If you folks, if you folks noticed anything in the uh, behind the scenes stuff, comment below. Let me know. Uh, there was a couple other things, a couple movies that were released or announced from the Disney Expo this weekend. Um, any news? Like right now, what time is it? It is eight forty p.m. Eastern right now. So any other news that comes out uh, of there, I'll probably I'll cover uh, in tomorrow's vlog. It definitely, if there's The Last Jedi, we'll definitely be talking about Game of Thrones. <sighs> okay. A couple movies uh, that got announced. Toy Story 4. Hmm. I, I, wasn't, I, don't, I wasn't a fan of Toy Story 3, but what can you do? Uh, so, Toy Story 4, that's scheduled for June, 24, June 21st, 2019. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2. I haven't seen the first one. Oh, okay. So, any fans of Olaf, the snow, the, the snowman from Frozen, he's getting his own little movie. Uh, Olaf's Frozen Adventure. So, that's kind of, that's cool. Because that, he was, like, the only one that I really liked, uh, out of that movie, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Incredibles 2. Man. I remember liking The Incredibles, so I'll probably end up watching this one. Um, what else? Oh, uh, they're going to be doing a live-action Dumbo. Um, people, oh, the confirm a lot of, okay, a lot, I see a lot of rumors for the live-action Aladdin one. Um, the only confirmed roles of this, uh, um, Mina Misood. As Aladdin, Naomi Scott as Jasmine, and Will Smith as the genie, which I kind of can see, to be honest. Um, apparently, Dwayne Johnson will be taking part. Um, where is it? At, at some point in The Lion King, I could see him being Mufasa if they haven't already like uh, uh, cast him. And. For that Lion King, apparently some footage came out at this expo. It hasn't been released yet, and it looks really good. Uh, if you seen what, if you saw what John Favreau did with the Jungle Book, like Jesus, those it's all, it almost looks too lifelike. Anyway, but that'll be so that I don't know that'll be kind of cool to see as, in Lion King, to be honest. Um, but Hugh ja Hugh Jackman will be playing Scar in that one. Um, yeah. Anything else from that was uh, that we've heard is Avengers Infinity War. Uh, Thanos will be bringing his henchmen, the Black Order. Um, so that's actually going to be pretty exciting if they do it properly. Um, other than that, there's, there was there was an Infinity War trailer, but that hasn't been made public. And I'm only seeing kind of like what other people are saying has happened. And 
a lot of the details have kind of changed. Um, so I'm not going to go on rumors with this. It, anything that's like official, it comes out of like the fest itself. I see it. Um, then it'll be all bueno. Then we'll talk about it. Side note, Josh Brolin was on stage for the uh, Infinity War thing, and he held up Thanos' like Infinity Gauntlet. He is fucking j -j -j jacked for Cable and Deadpool. Oh my god! I called it Cable and Deadpool because that's a comic, but it's it's a Deadpool too. My bad. My bad. Okay, that's it for the Disney Expo. What do we got next? Oh yeah, okay. Last last little show note, and then we'll uh, close it up. Something really interesting. So, okay. So I was watching the uh, UFC card in Glasgow today. Um, it actually happened this afternoon. And I didn't listen to the commentary. I actually muted the fights. And I had, um, for a couple of fights, I had Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Um, for other ones, I was listening to a couple different songs from Game of Thrones. Um... There was Let's Play a Game, uh, Light of the Seven, Winter is Coming, Winter is Here, um, and you're fucking right, Winter is Here, about 15 minutes, Eastern Time, you fucks. Anyway, <laughs> but any, so I was listening to like orchestra music, kind of, and like that kind of instrumental music, and I noticed something very interesting. Depending on the song and the fighter, the movements will actually match like the timing of the song it's really really interesting um it's almost like there's a certain it's almost like there's a universal timing like when people make music or construct a melody or even when they're you know it's a physical timing thing and it's almost like there's a universal thing that we go on maybe it's like that four four count like one and two and three and four one and two you know what i mean that last one probably should have been an and but my bad either way but for so for certain songs but with like certain fighters they'd be like before they'd even like throw a punch the way they'd be moving and like throwing little feints would match the music or even like you know, they'd be kind of like set in one in one way on the feet. Maybe throw like a couple strikes or a feint. And then they'd start circling around to the left or right. And that would match like with the music when the music would change in a way. Like it was almost like one fighter would be matching like the like uh, the violins and, you know, like the string section. And the other one was kind of like on the heavier, like the bass drum and uh, the cellos. I know that was all, that's a string section, but, or like, you know, the horns. It, it was just, it was really, really interesting to see this in motion and to see this in work, like in real life in a way, because with short films and with even just little things, like I like do, like I love matching up when something happens in a scene or when a scene changes if you pay attention, like that, I, I try and make those match the music, like of some sort, you know what I mean? Um, the example I can think of off the top of my head, the tech noir unboxing, when certain things happen in the music, that's when like the scene will change or that's when specifically, uh, when Kyle Reese is like shooting at the Terminator, I like... I timed the music with those gunshots because I've always been like a fan of that kind of thing. Um, and to actually see that like in real life was almost like a little bit mind blowing, to be honest with you. I just, I found it really, really fascinating. Um, a movie that came out recently, baby driver, Edgar Penn, right? Edgar Wright Penn. Edgar it might just be Edgar Wright. Anyway, <clears throat> He shot he like he shot that movie the exact same way, but he, like almost to where like he literally he had the songs in mind and he would write he wrote it in the script of like what song was going on, and they would have those playing like while they're filming and everything. 
So like the actors at, like would actually like be on time with the music, like with every gunshot and everything. Um, we saw that kind of done in the Suicide Squad trailers and everything, but like to do a whole movie like that is really interesting. Um, and honestly, like I haven't seen that movie yet, but now that like I know how it was made and that it was done to like really match this, like the time of the music and what happens in uh, certain songs. Uh, yeah. I, I, I have to see it now. Um, so that's about it for today. <laughs> um, Jesus, we talked about a lot, folks. We've got a lot in this one. If any of you uh, listen to this at work, hope your boss didn't catch you. Uh, if you listen to this on the way to work, I hope this got you through the drive or even on the way from work to home. Hope this got you through the drive. I know that can be a little stressful. Uh, on the way to work, you're lo- kind of dreading it. You're like, fuck, man, I don't want to go to work today. Fucking bitch-ass Larry's always bringing that casserole and shit in. I don't give a fuck if Linda made it. You know what I mean? And then when, like, on the way home, like, you leave work and you're like, God damn it, I fucking knew Larry was going to bring that casserole. Son of a bitch. And, like, you bring that shit home with you. I get it. So I hope, you know, there. I don't know, there wasn't a whole lot of giggly wigglies maybe during this one, but uh, I hope there was something in there for you folks. Either way, mucho love for you hooligan squad. Uh, y'all mean the fucking world to me, you honestly do. I know a lot of YouTubers and people on Instagram say that, but, um, <coughs> you know, I asked, I asked you hooligans if you wanted me to do YouTube, um... You folks wanted it, so we did it, and fucking like two years later, here we are. So, I don't know. I owe you folks a lot. Fucking love y'all. i for you beautiful fat jays. Uh, I will see y'all tomorrow for the vlog. Remember, patreon.com slash church juvie. I love y'all. Subscribe, comment below. I'm out. <laughs>